to understand. He was betrayed by a friend, arrested and falsely sentenced to death. Jesus could have avoided the cross, called down fire from heaven, or summoned legions of angels to rescue him, to save him. But Jesus was not interested in saving himself. He was all about saving you. Every detail of this torturous path to the cross was part of God's plan to bring you to him. We're all broken. We've all messed up and have all made wrong choices. And no one had to teach us as a baby about anger and selfishness. We just came out that way, sort of a sin covering. But on the cross, with his blood he shed, the Bible says Jesus blotted out our record of sin, nailing it to his cross. The blood of Jesus washes away our sin covering. And his blood is our ticket. Our ticket to enter through a new door, a forever relationship door with God. So what do we do with this great news? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, it's not enough to believe in Jesus with just your head. You must believe with your heart. Now. There's just one person alone at the foot of the cross. It is you. What will you say to Jesus? Say, thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for me. I'm giving you my heart today, Jesus. I do believe you died for me and that you were raised from the dead for me. Please give me a new heart and a new life right now. Jason Blood Church coming to you today. God bless each and every one of you. Pay attention to the salvation message at the beginning of the video. It's the most important thing. We're going to cover 1 Corinthians 15 today. Longest chapter in the in, in 1 Corinthians. Probably one of the most important in respects to rapture and resurrection. And then the good news, the salvation. What sets Christianity apart from every other religion in the world is the founder of the religion, Jesus Christ, never is not dead. He didn't stay dead. And as a New Testament, you know, Bible-believing Christian, we don't have to wait until the last day, at, you know, which would be the resurrection of, or the second death for our redemption. So 1 Corinthians, it starts out, you know, with the great, the great news of the gospel, that Jesus died, buried, and rose from the dead, and the blood, of course, will atone all your sins. So get saved today. But there's a lot of heresies that people, uh, it's, it's interesting, that will, will perpetrate. And if you ask somebody what the gospel is, you usually don't get the right answer. You'll get something different. You'll get everything from Matthew to Revelation is the gospel. Um, but gospel means good news. And so it can't be, for example, a lot of the verses in the Bible, like 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. You know, the Antichrist showing up and sitting in the temple at Jerusalem, well, that's not good news. Um, you know, there's many examples of demonic monsters and, and possession in the Bible. In Revelation chapter 9, for example, where they come out of the pit, that's certainly not good news. Or just the simple fact that everlasting fire was prepared for the devil and his angels in Matthew 25, 41, uh, where, where people are told to depart from, from God at the... Uh, at the final judgment, and so that's not good news either for people that to head to he, you know heading to hell where they could have had secure salvation. And there's a lot of heresies taught around the around the gospel. There's a heresy that is taught that people in the Old Testament were saved by looking forward to the cross, and then the same another heresy while people in the New Testament are saved by looking back to the cross. Well, the truth is the New Testament. Has, there are 10 different Gospels uh, mentioned, and they're, they're different from one another, and there are different time periods in them. And so you have to rightly divide the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2.15. There's the Gospel of the Kingdom, for example, Matthew 4.23. And that's a Gospel we preach exclusively to the Jews, and it's confirmed by signs. When Christ died, he put away the law. 
and um, he when he died, he went down to Abraham's bosom, and he and he gave them the good news that that he had taken away their sins, even though the blood of of sacrifices of of animals had had forgiven the Old Testament saints, but they couldn't. They weren't clean yet. They weren't able to leave Abraham's bosom to go to the third heaven. And so there's all these different gospels um, that we we've got to be careful not to not to preach the wrong one. Galatians one nine. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that we have received, let him be accursed. I mean, it shows the importance of getting the correct doctrine. First Timothy one ten through eleven. The glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. This is Paul talking. You know, he he's the one that received. 1 Corinthians 15 and, and gave us the gospel. And so in our time, that's, you know, that's, that's paramount. Where the gospel of the kingdom preached by the 144 Jewish witnesses are a tribulation doctrine. It's not ours. We're under the grace of, of the gospel of God, you know, of Jesus Christ, where he died for us in this church age. But this, this time will come to an end and there'll be another gospel preached. Um, an angel in heaven will come down and preach in the tribulation the everlasting gospel but until you know certainly until that point we've been 2,000 years in a church age and people have wrong doctrine so many people believe that you know Christ died for our sins but they don't they don't believe that it's the only thing that takes care of your sin it solely gets rid of your sins they'll add works to it you know, the Catholics fall under this. A lot of the Protestants fall underneath this as well. So they'll replace the idea of the one sacrifice on the cross. Where we know the Bible truly says that Hebrew 10, 8 through 12, the offering of the body of Jesus Christ was once and for all. And so we know 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 tells us if we were willing to to believe with our heart, that's a, a Romans 10, 9, and 10 thing, and we confess with our mouth, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, that on the good news that Christ died for our sins and believe in that for eternal salvation and the bloodshed, then that's enough. But there's many that don't believe that. There's many that don't believe that. And so they are cursed, if you look at it. And they walk around with their wrong apostate doctrines and their heresies, And they don't know how to rightly divide the scriptures, and so they're confused. And we call it confusion, you call it lost. They think they're saved. That's even the worst part about it. And so if you're not saved, get saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. God bless.